The Christian Incomplete Armor by William Grinnell Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 Chapter 60 The last two directions in the duty of thanksgiving Ninthly, let thy praises be real, words pay no debts. There goes more to thankfulness than a mouthful of windy praises, which pass away with the sound. A gracious heart is too wise to think God will be put off with a song. He will give God that, but it is the least he intends. The Lord is my strength and song, and I will prepare him an habitation. Exodus chapter 15 verse 2 Thankfulness is costly work. Shall I offer to God that which costs me nothing, saith David. Cheap praises are easily obtained, but when it is attended with any expense, then many grow sick of it. The Jews could sing when delivered from Babylon, Psalms 121, but it was long before they could find in their hearts to build God a habitation. The time was not come for that. They might have said their heart was not come. They had money and time enough to build their own, but none for God. Though herein they acted foolishly, for as fast as they built at one end, God pulled down at the other. Some in our time, instead of erecting God in habitation and assisting our nation to build synagogues, have pulled them down and carried the beams to their own houses. Excellent artists in taking down ministers and their maintenance whereby the gospel should be upheld. If this be the way to thrive, God gave his people but ill counsel when he said, Consider now from this day, I will bless you. Haggai 2, verse 18 and 19. Section 1. First, then, are our praises acceptable when they are sincere? All that is within me bless his holy name. Psalms 103, verse 1. When his mercies beget high and honorable thoughts of God in our hearts, we read of cursing God in our hearts. Job 1, 5, which is done when we have low thoughts of his greatness and goodness. On the contrary, when the mercies of God imprint such an image in the heart as lively represents his attributes, then thou blessest God in thy heart by adoring his majesty, reverencing his holiness, delighting his love, and fearing his goodness. Here is real thankfulness. Now, as the glass represents the image of the person who looks on it, so the thankful soul reflects these those glorious attributes which God puts forth in his mercies. Thus, God sees his face in a true glass, which the thankful soul holds up while he praises him, whereas an unthankful heart, like a broken glass, disfigures the beautiful face of God by conceiving such low thoughts as are unworthy of his gracious attributes. Secondly, when they are obedient to God accounts those mercies forgotten that are not written with legible characters in their lives. Psalms 106, verse 21. They forgot God, their Savior. Upon the Israelites' victories over the city, Agai, an altar is built as a monument of the signal mercy. Now, mark what God commands to be written on the stones thereof. One would have thought the history of that day's work should have been the sculpture, but it is the copy of the Law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. Joshua 8, verse 30 and 32, whereby he plainly showed that the best way of remembering the mercy was 
not to forget to keep the law. Saul could not blind Samuel's eyes. The people saved the best of the cattle for sacrifice. Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. 1 Samuel 15.22 As if he had said, What, Saul, thinketh thou to bribe God with the sacrifice, while thou art disobedient to his command? Dost thou deny him thy own heart to obey his word, and give him a beast heart in sacrifice for it? Is this the oblation which he hath required or will accept? Truly God raises hung, hungry from our thanksgiving dinner, if obedience be not a dish at the table. Without this we and our sacrifices may burn together. God will pluck such from the horns of the altar, and to take them off their knees with their hypocritical praises, to pay his debt in another kind. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah 1 verse 19 Then, and not till then, will God eat of your sacrifices and yourselves taste of the sweetness of your enjoyments. Thou meeteth him that rejoices and worketh righteousness. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 5 Not rejoice without working righteous, nor that without rejoicing in the work. The threatening, Deuteronomy 28, is leveled against Israel, not merely because he served uh, not God, but because they served him, not with gladness in the abundance of his mercies. God delights to have his mercies seen in the cheerful countenance of his servants while they are at work. Section 2. Thirdly, then they are real praises when they end in acts of mercy. By him let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. Now, mark the next words. But to do good and com communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices God is well pleased. As if he had said, Think not that you may thank God to save yourselves trouble and expense. God's goodness to us should not should make us merciful to others. If it were strange indeed a soul should come out of his tender bosom with a heart and uncharitable heart. Some children do not indeed take after their earthly parents as Cicero's son, who had nothing of his father but his name. But God's children all partake of their Heavenly Father's nature. Philosophy tells us that there is no reaction from the earth to the heavens. They indeed shed their influences upon the lower world, which quicken and fructify it, but the earth returns none back to make the sun shine the better. David knew that his goodness extended not unto God, but this made him reach it forth to his brother. Psalms 16 verse 3. Indeed, God hath left his poor saints to receive the rent we owe unto him for his mercies. An ingenious guest, through, though his friend will take nothing for his entertainment, yet to show his thankfulness will give something to his servants. At Christ's return, how doth he salute his saints? Not come ye blessed, Ye have kept such a thanksgiving day. But I was hungry, and ye gave me meat. Naked, and ye clothed me. Matthew 25, verse 35 and 36. Alms are called fruit. When I have performed this, and have sealed to them this fruit, Romans 15:28, implying that all our profession without these good works are but leaves, this is the solid fruit of our faith, love to God and thankfulness for his mercies. Neither must these acts of charity be confined to the money in thy purse or the bread in thy cupboard. Though these are included, there are poor souls as well as poor bodies that need relief. Hath God 